A transmedia is a, is a way to tell stories across multiple platforms and devices. It's a way that you can let the characters live and breathe beyond one single screen. It's an exciting time to be a storyteller because I think what it does is it's, it's kind of looking at how people are consuming their entertainment now and, and kind of catching up. It's, it's, it's bringing storytelling into the 21st century. My name is Lance Weiler. I'm a storyteller and I make games, TV, and film. I think what's exciting about that is uh, everybody right now is kind of their own media company anyway. They can push button publish, they can upload videos to YouTube, they're telling their own stories. What we're looking at is saying, okay, how can we tell a story to them and engage them in a way so it's participatory, you know, that they can be involved in that. So I think in that sense, audience, at least how we look at it is, they're moving from the, the point of being a passive participant to a collaborator, in a sense. And it's very similar to how uh, at one time stories were told around fires and people were able to embellish those stories and add to those stories. We're kind of coming back to that point where a story isn't necessarily owned by one individual anymore. It's something that it takes on a social context. It, it had been in talks with people across various industries, not only like large studios, large broadcasters, European broadcasters for television, but also publishers, uh, music labels, and gaming companies. They're all kind of looking at this and saying, okay, we know that there's a paradigm shift. We know that this is changing. We know that the way that we've been doing business as usual isn't working anymore. And we know that the audience is, is, is evolving. So how do we get in front of that? How do we actually do something to make a difference? So in the conversations that we've had and the work that we've been doing, it's across multiple industries. I think that the uh, transmedia producer is got to be multi-skilled and it's very difficult to skill yourself in that way from scratch. So just in fact my experience of producing film is that uh, every type of film producer is different. Every film producer comes to his or her work from a personal background and a whole lot of different experiences and some are more financially focused and some are more uh, creatively focused and some are more team based and others are not. My name's Ian Ginn. I live and work in Amsterdam, also in Lon London and uh, more and more in Los Angeles. I'm a creative producer. I spend quite a lot of my time involved with education and, and more and more around transmedia storytelling. The way that I found works is in a media lab setting and not necessarily with a film school but with media students and film students of some of which are writers and some are producers and directors and animators, storytellers uh, that are working in quite uh, close but definitely uh, cross-discipline teams. I'll tell you what, I do think in one way that we're living in, an, in a period that's a bit like the Wild West. So there are new frontiers because uh, traditional business models for broadcast TV and for independent film, those businesses are broken. So the young audiences now don't think about television in that way. They don't think about old, st old TV formats, I'll wait for the next episode next week. If they see something that they like, they're going to go to the web to either look for more content or for the next episode. So the whole kind of model is broken down. Hola, me llamo Robert Figueras, uh, soy de Figueras y conjuntamente con Gemma Dunjo estamos dirigiendo un proyecto que se llama y produciendo un proyecto que se llama Panzer Chocolate. Nosotros decimos uno de los primeros proyectos transmedia concebidos como tal en el país. La frase que utilizamos un poco para resumir Panzer Chocolate sería una mezcla desde la humildad con, entre Indiana Jones y la matanza de Texas. En 
nuestro caso, por ejemplo, queríamos que el proyecto por ejemplo, fuera muy comercial, queríamos que fuera de bajo presupuesto, queríamos que fuera enfocada a un público de gente joven y queríamos sobre todo que uno de los formatos, el principal, fuera la película. Entonces empiezas por el proyecto principal, en nuestro caso la película, y a partir de aquí fuimos montando la historia del videojuego, la novela gráfica y cada uno de los formatos que tenemos en el proyecto. En Aguadilla, Euskal Herriane, de España, no deben ninguno en Esnescua, la Aurora Matías, Juan Díaz, que estuvo de Man, Aurora Pauso, va en Sareso, se le dan mundos, Juan, en Sareso, Aurora Pauso, estuvo de Man, allá, hay que pensar en Aguadilla, América, en Aguadilla, un rango paso, anda, ni usted, esta era posible, un momento también, tal. The main question is why to teach it, like in the film schools. When this, the, like the film school is a place when you talk about art, yeah, you talk about some values, kind of ethic, you talk about the philosophy and why we're doing this, what we do, and what people have it. So then, how to use transmedia to share these values, what we what we have. So I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna find out. It, it sounds pretty interesting, really, because it involves a lot of people. It's uh, like a process that takes all the people to be interested in something. So, from, on one hand, it's, it's very interesting, but on the other hand, it can be quite dangerous, I think. I think it can be interesting. I'm not very sure that it can, at the end, replace what is the work of the creative work, in isolation, isolated, which is also important to get to a certain nature of the work of the creative work del cine que viene un poco de la intimidad eh, no sabría muy bien hasta qué punto podría compartir esos, esas intimidades creativas a través de Transmedia o qué tan permisivo puede hacer pero supongo que para muchas personas es una opción